Good morning, guys. Good morning. Thank you very much for the time to chat about the series because congratulations, first of all, on how, how long it's gone because it feels like you guys have had a chance to build something. I really think that the, in season four, too, I legitimately think we finally hit our stride. I know yeah. it's like it's Don't not tell that. the network, but we finally figured out what we we're doing. Got it only took four years. Um, but but it, actually, seven years, four seasons. Seven years, four seasons. Yeah. But we've learned a lot and we've grown a lot. Physically, yeah. a lot of us have gained a lot of weight. A lot of actually, weight, it's yeah. the opposite is that Dana and Craig both got. The show gave them diabetes. I'm not going to say it gave them diabetes, but they got. Craft service gave them diabetes. Um, but <laughs> their um, working out since getting the diabetes has made them look so much better and has had years to their marriages. Yeah. Because their wives can want them again. <laughs> well, what has changed this season? What would you say went into this one that maybe you guys hate yourself? Henry start? was sober for most of this one. I think that's I'm, that you know, on and off the wagon, whatever helps. Yeah. That's what I you say. Know, when I'm, when the juice player. helps, I'm doing that, yeah. and when the juice yeah. doesn't help, I'm wind them up, and then you got to. It's getting them to come down. Oh God! No, yeah. honestly, I think that we. Oh, it's the vibe of the show. It has matured. But also, thing like most of the, most of the sitcoms I loved as a kid got like the good, the, the really good ones got better. Every you know every season once you knew, and I think I was thinking about it. The, the audience knows the characters at this point. The creators um, trust us. Yeah. Like Dave and Casper trust us. We all have, have grown together as a cast. Yeah, I got to direct this season, so which was oh, inmates really, are running the asylum. It was really mm -hmm. fun getting to like because I got to torture him. Because then yeah, I yeah, Henry's normally an easy actor to deal with, but then all of a sudden I direct an episode <laughs> and he becomes a diva. I can't find my shoes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> How about your character? Can you find your character? No. Uh, he wanted motivation, and I was like, um, I'm here. I also like dressed with like the riding crop and the and the boots and the director's chair. Yeah, he dressed like a Nazi wife. Totally, I did the whole thing. Uh, but we it's had... a role to play. I really wasn't directing so much as acting like a director. What it is about the show, I feel like we understood that we, we, we understand a lot more about the show than ever before. And, uh, and our, our roles on it. it mm -hmm. I really think that the... Because I hadn't seen any of the final cuts. And I saw two episodes recently at C2E2 in Chicago. And the show is... Uh, it's like a different beast. It, yeah. You could see it's like... you it It's a well-oiled machine. I think also uh, early on, we were in like 11 to 12 minute episodes. I think we were fighting that because the, the writing was so big and so funny and, and a lot of improv so it was hard to compact the, the, all the work into a, 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 a bite size you know a piece of television and you now learn how to we, make yeah. faster quicker choices yeah mm. yeah that's cool and i read the description of the show again and it said that paul is a sweethearted demon is he still a sweethearted demon i don't know if i got that from the first new episode so what i like about gary is Gary started off as uh, obviously very sweet because that was kind of the conceit, right? That he, right. it's like, how is he even a demon? Like he's like too innocent to be a demon. But I think I've realized over time is that Dave and I talk a lot about uh, Homer Simpsoning, Homer Simpsoning Gary, where he grows from this the kind of like the original seasons of Homer Simpson. It's like he is just like a befuddled dad, right. but then he grows into the uber idiot. And, like, Gary kind of, we just did that in the fast lane. Like, made him as stupid as possible. And I started realizing, oh, he's just so stupid he ended up in hell. And that you just become a terrible person accidentally because you have no clue what social graces are, what physical limitations are. It's like a person, like, in terms of, like, what is the, what do you, you know, I can do this. I mean, we know each other. I have this intent. I have his consent implicitly because we camera, signed right? forms. Yeah. So when I uh, we yeah. signed forms yeah. that said I'm allowed to touch you. What about Satan? I mean, has I, he changed? I mean, he has. He has. I think he has. Uh, a, a, to use a word, he's been humanized. Uh, right. He's got right. flaws. I, I was, as you were describing Gary, I realized that the theme that comes up, a recurring theme for me, is why do I not get rid of Gary? Why do I not just? put him either in purgatory or just obliterate him. But there's, I, I still think you may be my devil spawn. I think that you are like you Satan's keep shot. Us. I keep trying for that because I feel like. Because every once in a while, like we will do an improv, like in a scene and he will be like, Gary, I'm your father. And then, so we have to just, and then they keep coming <laughs> and everybody out. everybody laughs and then they keep coming out. Like one of these shows, they're going to keep it. <laughs> like you just, yeah. like, is that what happens? Like you had, you had sex with a mule and I came out of it. Um, <laughs> But no, the the show has truly grown. Like yeah. it's weird to, sure. to say those words. We watch those new seasons and be like, "Wow, we're like 
Okay, season. Even the visual effects, I mean, which it's lends a lot to it. It's crazy. Now, we were saying that we, we've been doing the show long enough that the visual effects that early on uh, were kind of raw now are so polished, and that technology, I think, has just gotten more accessible. Right. So there's nothing the writers can't write. I mean, I read in the script, I'm like, wait a minute, what, like the, the episode uh, in this season four coming up with uh, Milk and Honey? Like, some of the stuff written on the page, I'm like, how are we going to do that? Like, early on, we had to figure out a practical way to do it. Kick it to post. Yeah, and, and now everything like, gets kicked to post, and they can make it happen. And, you're and like, they love to hear it. We're like, we'll do it in post. Don't worry about it. We'll do all this post. It's me saying that. And they're like, do you have any clue what you're talking about? Yeah, do you know your lines? Like, we'll Kick it to post. I can ADR all these. Post. Just put me towards the camera. I'll go... And then afterwards, <laughs> I'll pump in all the lines. We got this, guys. Yeah. We don't need to think so hard right now. Has the makeup and prosthetics gotten any easier? Because I know that's yeah. been a tough thing. It's, it's a well-oiled machine now. Yeah. But in the seven years we've been doing the show, like legitimately, the makeup technology has gotten better. Right. So we we have things that we didn't have before. Like we didn't. Know, I used to be me in a trailer. We didn't have in makeup remover. I think in season one, so we had to wear the makeup all the time. I now, was washed have, by they women. They spent eight dollars and got makeup. What? But it was nice. I used to I be scrubbed by women. By women. That. That are now my friends that came to my wedding. You know what I mean? But it was He's literally... actually not lying. We did. There weren't showers at the studio at that point, so the only way to get the makeup off I was to scrub it off with like washcloths. And people would scrub our us makeup with guy would have them. like pretty women come in. Is my wife going to see? There was. <laughs> she uh, doesn't watch. Her she doesn't watch. Her. You're right. Actually. Wait, are we? But now it's like we have these wipes with this new, like, like basically new liquids. Is that the term? There's new liquids. I love that you keep thinking there's new makeup technology. It's new stuff. This, this is this existed then. We just didn't know that we could use it. But now we just wipe it off. Wipe, wipe, and the glue is stronger, so it, right. can, it sticks harder because the hardest part is they used to fall off. Like the horns would like dip. Like this, and they'd have to keep replying like glue as it goes. But the problem is, is that these hairs are so precious, and each one would be like, "Bunk!" Like as it come out, and you're like, "Oh, there's another year less. I'll be able to play a stoner roommate on NBC." <laughs> he's going to, or he's going to young father now. Well, I have to ask. Uh, I understand you're a Satanist. Yes. You must be one of the few Satanists who's actually been able to play a demon on TV. There must be a, a multitude of Christians who angels. Hashtag blessed. Hashtag blessed. Yeah, that's right. So what's, what's ha- that like? Hashtag from first. A hashtag blessed. Personal standpoint. I think it's great. I yeah. think that I can apply my own knowledge, my own um, light as a cat knowledge. Is there a little reality people. to any of the, you know, a- any of the real side of your life, I guess? I think the people that know me and know our content that also know about chaos magic that know about ritual magic know that there are things embedded throughout the entire show. Mm-hmm. Shane Morton that is the artistic designer for the show is also a practicing magician. Everyone that is in the room is a practicing, like all that whole makeup crew really? are full on witches. Wow. And so we apply that to the show quite a bit. Like there's a season, there's in season three, there's a robe that the head, the one who is actual Satan, is played by Damien, um, Young? Damien Young, yeah. who's credible, but it is straight up actual sigils, really? the whole thing that were that were built and they were each represent various people and like factors of the show. That wow, we wanted that, that robe is beautiful. But it's something yeah, like that. It's, no, it's it's, it's it is a it's an esoteric show. But I love what you said before, like that everybody there's something for everybody in the show because there is all of the Satanism, but then there it is a very traditional interpretation of hell in the right. biblical sense because Dave Willis. The creator, you know, came from a very Christian background, raised in Southern Christian. And so it is still, we adhere to kind of the, the idea, the sort of traditional right. idea of Satan, right. you yes. know, and, and of hell. We yeah. are the devil's advocate, yeah. literally. That's pretty cool, actually. Yeah. So from your side of things, has anyone ever come up to you and said, my boss is exactly like him? Because I feel like he's the epitome of the worst boss ever. Offices are just getting so nice now. Yeah, I know. I'm sort of like old. Like, I always think of my scene as Ed Asner. I mean, like, you know, Mary Tyler Moore boss. <laughs> you know, the kind of bald headed, like, hey, get in the office. I, have, hey, I spent like, a couple of afternoons with Lorne Michaels. Yeah. Because I did a pilot for him. Mm-hmm. And it's close. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think it's, uh, I, 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 I don't know what it is about the airport, but TSA agents loves my Satan. I don't know what that's about. Oh, wow. Well, that's yeah. something. Because the, like, it's hard to recognize us out of makeup. Right. Mm-hmm. Without all the red makeup and the right. whole everything. But, uh, yeah, th- th- every time I pass through an airport, it's like, hey, Satan's here. <laughs> so clearly maybe their bosses are 
devil like, I guess. <laughs> Awful. Well, last thing I want to ask is what is one or two episodes that you guys love this season that you really want people to Oh, this tune season. In for? Some great ones this season. I mean, we just had so much fun. Um, it, a, it's, it, there are things I remember. I don't know what the final, I don't know what's kept in the episodes. There are moments right. that I know that we had on set that we laughed our asses off. Um, I don't even know if I can say, the, wait till you see these fetus puppets. They are the cutest, funniest little things. They're yeah. so funny, little hands. That was one of those things where I'm like, how are they going to do this? And then you see them do it, and you're like, that's it was, incredible. They're all on sticks, <laughs> and it's a guy walking around with two planks connected to the, the little fetus's legs. And, then and he's all wearing a blue food. suit. It's so, so much can, fun. Uh, they, they are so cute. Um, I think that there was that thing, and then, um, God, I love the trial episode. Getting to do a whole like because yeah, I did, we did all like a like, long we did a law and order episode that was fun that, 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 the the trial the trial what is the name of the uh, the with the monkey scopes trial yes what's his name because I did the whole like oh, later gentlemen of the court like that very ridiculous deep southern thing because Gary does not know how to be a normal human being right which is really fun Henry doesn't know how to be a normal the um, Help me learn. The uh, I love my favorite episode. I think is Stay in the Man, which is uh, an episode that's sort of uh, which I, that's another thing I liked about the writing. We got a little bit political. we got a little political this year, which was fun. But I mean, like not other, but in our classic way, just spoofing all of it. But we Stay in the Man is about a sort of uh, a very politicized uh, radio. Yeah, it's you know, a conservative shock, shock, shock job. job. Yeah, and and and. Uh, his involvement in, with Satan. Played and, by the absolutely incredible Phil Hendry. Yeah, it's He great. is so funny. Yeah. It's like, he what a legend. Yeah, but we were lucky. To, and that's another thing this season. We've got a lot of uh, wonderful uh, cameos. A, a lot, lot of old guys. You yeah. guys have amazing cameos. Yeah, a lot, yeah. A lot of good stuff. Uh, and that's, another, yeah, that's sort of George weird. Went. Yep. He had a couple of George awful Amos. stories. Yep. Uh, um, John Amos, who called me a clown. Mm -hmm. He says, oh yeah, I get you, you're a clown. Like, yep. you, Mr. I, he figured that out in like a minute and a half. Really fast. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's also that's also a testament to where the show's going. That we're getting, uh, you know, a lot of wonderful people to come on. And, Joey Fatone. Uh, yep. Joey Fatone. Wow. And what who's the chef? Uh, Rocco Despirito. Yeah, right. We have this <laughs> He's nuts. Yeah. Yeah. Fun. Well, thank you guys very much. You bet. A pleasure. You. Thank you.